everyone. Jack here again with part three of our ropes and rigging lessons. What we're going to be looking at for today's lesson is going to be how to set up a free diving float, plus a bunch of useful knots that you can use in your regular day-to-day -day training, and just things to help keep things nice and streamlined with your setup. What we're going to be using today is we're going to be using the line that I set up yesterday, marking all of our tape marks and making sure all the knots are okay. We're also going to be using free diving float, a reserve float, a couple of dive flags, and just some regular backup rope sections here just to run through some basics of knots. So, not talking around, let's just get straight into the practical session. Alrighty, so getting started with our float. We're going to look at how we set up our main line and make sure it's stored correctly in the float, as well as attaching things like our weights and our undersliding area. Okay, so what we're going to get started with inside of our float, we have plenty of storage space for this rope. However, with our rope here, what we want to make sure to happen is that it doesn't get tangled while we're transporting it out, swimming out to the dive site, because ropes are a real pain in the ass to untangle while you're out in the water. So what we're going to do is starting with the rope, start with the end of your rope, and what we're going to do is put a little bit of a knot in the end first. For those of you who have a base plate inside of your knot, inside of your diving buoy, you can attach a carabiner and clip it onto that. For those of you who are using a more modern pulley system, it's a good way to have a stop and knot on the inside in case you run your rope out of your float, okay, as a last redundancy. So, we have a little stop and knot there. What we're going to do as well is we're going to be starting a daisy chain. Now a daisy chain is a perfect way to help prevent any entanglement in our rope and it also makes it a little bit more space saving to store it. So what's going to happen? It's going to take our rope like this, spin it around, one more little turn, and make a nice little hole like that. Now I'm just going to feed the rope through, and there you have the start of your daisy chain. And then what you need to do is just continue it on, feeding the rope through itself. So through, thread your hand through, grab the next bit, through, thread your hand through, grab the next bit. Once you get a bit more confident with it, you can start threading it through a little bit quicker. Alright, the longer the ropes you get, the more you get used to it, and it pays to be able to put it back together really quickly. So we just keep feeding it back through like this, and before you know it, you're at the other end of your rope. And there goes the rain getting started, I'm going to tie a knot in this, store it up inside the float like that, and it's good to go. The last little bit we're going to be putting in into our float is attaching our bottom weight. So I use my main carabiner. I tend to prefer to use these climbing carabiners, which have a little screw point here, so we can keep it nice and secured. That way, if it ever has any collisions or gets snagged, less chance of this carabiner popping off and you losing all of your lead. So, I'm going to pop this up into the float like that, store it all in there, and close it up. Last little thing to add on, main carabiner. This is going to be hanging underneath our float. Now, it's good to have a nice wide carabiner like this. It's going to come in handy for later, once we start attaching our line to the bottom. It also means you have a lot more room to work with inside of here. If you have a very small carabiner, it's very easy for it to get open accidentally and you to lose your dive line out of the side of it. So, for our main carabiner, just always keep it clipped on underneath our float like that. Very simple, very straightforward. So, what we're going to look at next, we'll look at attaching other floats to this buoy. Okay, so, had a little bit of a break in the rain finally, so now I can get back to showing you guys how to attach a buoy. So, getting started, we're going to look at how we attach this line onto the side here. So we're going to be using a bowline knot, okay? So, very standard knot, very useful to learn. So we're going to thread from underneath, get a decent amount of line off the either side, it gives you more room to work with. Then we're going to take with our left hand, we're just going to make a little loop underneath like that, okay? Then we're going to take our right hand, thread it underneath, around the back of the rope on our left hand, and then we're going to pass it back down through the hole. And when we pull it tight like that, it should form a nice, solid loop. Now, if you get it correct, this knot shouldn't slide. It should stay just like that, okay? As long as the pressure's nice and firm and it fixes like that, it ain't going anywhere, okay? 
In order to release this knot, you just turn it over to the back of the knot itself, move it like that, and very easily it can release. Okay, so let's just do that one more time. So I'll start again from scratch. I feed my rope up underneath. Do one little twist with my left hand rope. Feed it up underneath it again. Around, and then back through. It's a good one to practice. A lot of people struggle learning this one at first, but once you learn it, you never forget it. Okay, so now that that's attached to our main buoy, what I'm going to be doing now is attaching our resting buoy. And it's more or less the exact same procedure. We're just going to do the exact same knot. You can do it either through these holes here. I have a little cord attached here for when I go spearfishing. So I'm just going to attach to this line section here. So same again, through it goes. Make my underturn, my left hand. Up it goes around it, around the back, and then back through. Just like that, another bow. Nice and solid, isn't going anywhere. Okay, so let's take a look at that one again. Nice and easy on camera. Pretty simple, easy to take care of. To undo it again, just turn it over to its back, and you just release the loop like that. And then from there, you can just very easily pull it apart. Okay, cool. So, now these two are attached. We have some place to warm boats from, but it's also a place if you've got, you know, maybe three, four people on a float, that has got a place where people can hang on to out of the way. Now, if you're going to be diving regularly with, you know, a group of three or four, it might be more beneficial to get a smaller free diving buoy. That way you have plenty of place to store things like masks and pairs of fins and any extra equipment that someone might want to bring out, maybe even bottles of water. They can store it all in a spare free diving float. Usually there's much smaller ones available on the market for just this purpose. Okay, now getting into flags. Now, for those of us in Australia, we have our basic dive flag here. It's generally required that you always carry a flag on your float just to make sure that boats know exactly what that buoy is in the water. Okay, so when I'm diving with this float, going out spearfishing, I just use my little flag here. If I was going to go out diving in an area which I know has very little boat traffic, I would still carry a small flag on my little resting buoy out the back here. If I'm going to be diving in the harbour, I have this much larger flag here, and I can fix that using a special coil, I can fix it onto this buoy here, or I can fix it straight into the side of my float here. Okay? Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Just use common sense if you're going to be diving in a busy waterway. Always have a flag attached to your float. Okay? Easy enough. So, now that we've got our basic setup, we're going to move into how we actually set up the line for diving. Okay, so let's get started and move into that. Okay, so now that we've got our dive line set up, it's time for us to go out to the dive site and start letting out our line. So an important thing to remember when letting out your line is that you're not going to be throwing out the dive weight first. Alright, if you throw out your bottom weights first, it's going to be very easy for you to lose them and potentially your whole rope to the bottom of the sea. So what we want to make sure is we're securing our line before we let it go. It's a very simple thing to do. First what you want to do is get your tennis ball and just bring it out to where the start of your daisy chain is. Undo your knot and just let out you know, a metre, metre and a half of rope and you've got a little bit of rope to play with then. What you do next is we're going to be doing what's called a clove hitch. How a clove hitch works so we're going to be getting one side, so from our left side here, we're going to turn the rope behind like that. Okay, and then on the front side, we're going to turn the rope around the front of the rope like that. So, one turn from the back, one turn from the front, and then we're just going to turn them in to face each other. Okay, what this will look like is you'll have one rope going down, one rope going up. Okay, we take that rope, and then what we're going to do is just clip it straight onto the carabiner, just pull a little bit extra slack out of the knot itself so it forms up onto the rope. If you see that, one rope going up, one rope going down. Okay? So, once that's nice and secured, a little bit of extra security, you can tie your line off on the side of the float like this. Just two simple knots, just one over the other, one more for good measure. And then from there, you can start to remove your bottom plate and your bottom weight, just easily let it down. Okay? 
pretty simple, pretty easy to follow. Just remembering these little safety points and it's going to save you potentially losing your bottom weight. Okay, say we want to adjust our depth. So to get started with adjusting our depth, we pull out a little bit of line here. We're going to pull out, let's just pull it out say to 5 meters. 5 meters depth, what we would do is we'd make cloak hitch, pull it over itself, make the line like so, and then what you're going to do is you're not going to remove this knot, we're going to put this one on first. So we take it into the carabiner, <laughs> place it up to the top, make sure it's nice and secure, and then from there we remove our other knot. Okay, your other one goes into place and you can just let your other rope go free nice and secure you're not going to risk juggling lines around or trying to reset ropes while you've got the weight under your arm it's very easy just to do it this way and then from there you just finish off tying your knot doing another double and it's nice and secured now for pulling up your rope there's two methods to do it you can either be laying on top of the rope or another alternate method is to use your foot on the carabiner itself you might see more people doing this one as they prefer it to over the hand pulling, everyone's a little bit different with what they like to do. So it's up to you to find which one you prefer to pull up the rope with. But always remember when you're pulling up the rope, keep this knot attached on the side just in case your hands slip. Okay? Easy enough. So what we're going to look at next, we'll look at a few of these basic knots from the lesson a little bit more up close so you can have something to practice with in your dry training. Easy enough. Let's do it. Okay, so let's just take an up-close look at a few of the knots that we've done in today's session, plus one more extra for you to practice. So first things first, we have our bowline knot. Okay, very simple one once you get it, it's just getting the right routine down for doing it. So start with your left hand, and what we want to do is make a little loop underneath. So the loop goes underneath the rope like that. See that? Pretty simple. Then just you're going to take your right hand, you're going to thread this loose bit of rope up through, around the back, and then back down through. When you pull it tight, it's going to look a little bit something like this. Okay? Pretty simple knot to learn. On the back side of the knot, when you roll it over, you'll notice this shape here. Okay? This is how you release the knot very easily. You just simply pull on that, and from there, the whole knot will just come apart very easily. Simple, easy not to learn, very useful for when you're attaching your float ropes to the main floats and to your resting buoy. Alright, it's a very good strong knot, it's not going to come apart. Okay, the other one we were looking at was our clove hitch for attaching our free diving line to the underside of our buoy. Okay, this one is a very useful one, once you get it right and nice and secure, with a little bit of weight under, underneath it from the bottom weight, it shouldn't go anywhere. So, how it starts. Start with your left hand and just make one loop over the top like that. Okay, little fold like that, pretty simple. Go to the other hand, and then you're just going to do the opposite. So fold it in behind the rope. Okay. Then to finish it off, all that's going to happen is you're going to take these two sides bring them together and that should make a nice clove hitch there. So an important thing to remember if you ever get stuck is that one rope should always end up, one section of the line should always end up facing up, the other side of the line should end up facing down. It should look a little bit like that. Okay, and that's your clove hitch. Very useful one for attaching your line to the carabiner underneath your buoy. Also very easy to do while you're in the water. Okay. Just a third little bonus one, so say you get stuck out in the water and you very quickly have to attach a line to your buoy, or you have to very quickly fix a line, alright? simple one to learn is your reef knot or square knot, very straightforward. Take your two sides like this, and all that's going to happen is you're going to be moving your left hand through this one. So we have a rope like this, our left hand is going to go over the top, and then it's going to turn underneath the rope like that. Pull them through a little bit. And then all that's going to happen is our left hand is going to go underneath and then turn over the top. So whatever your first movement, you always do the opposition for the next one. So, 
when you put those in and it ends up correct, you should end up with a knot that looks a little bit like this. All right, symmetrical on both sides, makes two easy loops. Pulls nice and tight like that. Easy enough. It requires pressure to hold in place. So always very helpful if you're getting stuck, something might break, you have to very quickly just make a knot for it. Very simple just to get a quick attachment to it. Another alternate way to do this one, say if you have a rope like that, you get an extra loop on one side, you very quickly have to attach. You just simply go out, around the back, and then back down through, and you end up with the exact same knot. Simple, pretty straightforward. So, that pretty much concludes our ropes and rigging. If you have any more questions about how to set up your buoy, if you have something that's slightly different to the setups I've shown, and you'd like to know how to get ready and maybe if you set it up in a bit better way, just send me a message. Uh, if you have any other questions or any other ideas for other videos, I have three days left in my quarantine here back home before I can actually go out and get in the water again, hopefully. So, yeah, any ideas are welcome. I'm going to be making any content that people suggest. So fire away with your suggestions and we'll go from there. Apart from that, have fun fixing up your setups and enjoy the water, guys. See ya.